In this video, I'm going to show you how I took this art here from Adobe Fresco and put it into repeat in Adobe Illustrator. This is a pixel brush, a China marker brush that I used to create this art on layers. And then I exported it to Illustrator using this uh, export button here and open a copy. Then you can choose to open it on your desktop. And, and from there, let's go over to Illustrator. And here what we have is the image tracing. Now I'm not going to walk through the steps of tracing your art, um, but the steps are fairly straightforward. And what we have now, once this artwork has been traced, is anchor points and curve handles. And so it's truly vector art, but it still retains some of the nice texture from the original work in Fresco. And now I want to put it into a pattern so that it looks like this example here where everything is interlocking and it is a nice vector pattern. So let's take a look at how we do this. So I'm moving over to another document here. And here I have an eight and a half by 11, just a letter sized artboard. And I know this is in the ballpark of the size that I want this art to be. And so I'm gonna take this and put it into pattern editing mode and start to figure out the repeat. So I've got the art selected, and then I'm going to go over to Object, Pattern, Make. And now it's in pattern editing mode, and we can see copies repeating here. Um, what happens when you bring something into pattern editing mode, uh, it usually gets ungrouped by one layer. So I want to select all Commander Control A, and then Commander Control G to group it so that it's all stuck together um, before I go forward. Next thing that I want to do is hide the artboard because it's really distracting seeing the white and the gray background here. So command or control shift H is the shortcut to hide the artboard. Okay. So now that I can see the art here and it is repeating, I want to change this from a grid repeat to a half drop repeat or a, as, as it's known here, a brick by column repeat. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I can use the tile tool here to work with, you know, it's just like bounding box handles, moving this in to close up some of those gaps. And then what I'm going to see here is overlap that eventually I'm going to need to trim off. And the problem that we have with pattern editing mode is that, you know, the tool that I like to use, especially for art like this, is the eraser tool which does not work in pattern editing mode, unfortunately. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to set this repeat up just crudely in pattern editing mode. Then I'm going to go move out to the artboard and kind of recreate what I have here in pattern editing mode so that I have all the tools that I need to do the editing that I need to do. So that's the process that we're going to work through here. So at this moment, I'm going to, I've got that tile tool on. Let me turn that off and look over here at the width and height. And this is something that's part of why I'm setting this up now inside of pattern editing mode. What I want is a nice round uh, dimension here for the width and the height, because it's going to make it easier for me to work with when I go out to the artboard. So this is 7.9 by 11.2. Making sure I unlink the width and height. I'm going to change this to eight inches because it's so close to eight inches and 11. Let's see what happens when I make this 11. Um, I think that I've got so much of a gap down here that I'm going to squish this up a, a bit. So I'm going back to the tile tool. I'm going to just move that up somewhat and, uh, let me try here again. I'm going back, uh, turning off the pattern tile tool and see if I can do eight by 10. Um, and so at that size, I know that I've got something regular that I can use out on the artboard, which you'll see in a minute. And then also I have overlap here so I can see what might need to be trimmed. And there is probably places that I'm going to have to add a little bit of artwork here. Let's see. I make this just a little bit bigger to fill in that gap. And all right, this looks like it might work. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is exit pattern editing mode, saving this art just by clicking on this arrow here. And now I'll move the original off to the side. Then I'll go into the swatches panel where I have the pattern fill swatch that I just created. And I'll drag this out to the artboard. 
And what this is, is my, you know, original art basically. Um, but you can see if I look at this in outline mode, this is the no fill, no stroke bounding shape that's created when your pattern is moved from pattern editing mode into the swatches panel. And it's such a wide rectangle here. And we can see the dimensions at the top control bar, 16 inches by 10 inches. So really what this is, is the same height of the tile that we had in pattern editing mode, but the width is doubled, we went from eight to 16 inches. And that's because uh, Illustrator is translating that what was a half drop repeat tile into a full drop or a regular grid repeat because that's the only way that pattern uh, fill swatches can tile in Illustrator. So um, I need to shrink this back down to the eight by 10 um, in order to work with it like I'm working inside pattern editing mode. So with that selected, let me go ahead and give it, let's give it a really bright color here. Go back um, into uh, preview. And now I can see that I've made that kind of magenta shape there. So I can see it better. The next step is to shrink it down. So I'm going to make sure that I have my center reference point checked. So the box will shrink towards the center where my central motif is. And then I'll change, got to have these two unlocked to do them out of proportion because I want to keep the 10 inch height, but I do want to change this to an eight inch width. And when I do that, you can see the box now shrinks down to eight inches. Great. Now, all of this art here, there's some of it in the center that I want to keep and all the extra around the edges I want to get rid of. And it's all grouped here. So let me ungroup it and I'll just get rid of all of these are the, this is the artwork that Illustrator places in here to make that rectangle repeat work since it's been translated from a half drop to a full drop. And we don't need that art. We only need this central motif, the original motif I started with, and I need it arranged with that tile, just like it was in pattern editing mode. Only now I'm out, out on the artboard and I can use the tools that I need uh, to do the, the editing that I need to do. The first thing I want to do is set the keyboard increment because I'm going to be doing a lot of nudging with my arrow keys. So to do this, go command or control K that's preferences. And then right here you can set your keyboard increment. So this is why I wanted that eight by 10, that nice regular, uh, dimension there. So it would be easy for me to do the nudging that I need to do out here. So the keyboard increment is set to one inch, click. Okay. So now let's nudge this. When you hold down the shift key, you multiply that keyboard increment by 10. So that'll give us 10 inches. And we know the height of this tile is 10 inches. So I'm going to hold shift. Oh wait, first copy, copy, paste in front, commander, control C, commander, control F, and then hold shift and nudge it up and then do the same thing. Copy, paste in front and then hold shift and nudge it down. So now I've got the vertical repeat here and I'm changing the color of the artwork so that it's easier to see. And let's go ahead and I'll put this in the back. Now, when I do the sides, there's going to be a, a drop of half of this height, which is now 10 inches. So the half drop will be five inches. So I'll take all of this art here. Okay. Copy paste in front, commander control C, commander control F. And this time, I got to nudge it eight inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then down one, two, three, four, five. So if you knew you were working in these dimensions and you wanted to, you could set up actions to make that go pretty fast. Um, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm used to nudging, especially when I'm not making a video and I'm working myself, I can do this pretty fast. So then I'm going to, uh, get this over to the other side. So copy, paste in front, all three of those, uh, repeats there and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now I see my, you know, central motif with all the art around it. Um, and so I know what I need to trim off. And one of the things that's important here is that, I want this artwork that's crossing the, uh, 
the pink tile boundary, I don't want to trim it flat to this pink line. Otherwise, you'll start to see that. So I want areas where those curves are crossing the line into the other tiles because that's going to help us with this interlocking look. This part right here, you know, I don't want to mess with all of that art that's crossing the boundary there. What I want to do is do a little bit of trimming up here. So I'm going to address just that top, you know, the top and bottom, the vertical repeat by working on this top area here. So I'm using the green as kind of showing me where the art is. I'll put that in front so we can really see where it's crossing. Then I'm going to select the black art and use the eraser tool. And the eraser tool only erases what you have selected. That is, uh, let's see, shift E is the shortcut for the eraser tool. There it is right there in the, in the tool panel. And it works just like a brush. And so what I want to do is trim the black art in such a way that it looks like the where the green art is, it's kind of bumping up against that. So I'm going to trim off all of this stuff here. And you'll see when I release, only the black gets trimmed because it's selected. And this is how the eraser tool works, which is great. All right, so there's like a little piece here. So I'll keep that. And also, if I was doing this, you know, outside of a video, I'm trying to make this not take too long. I would probably pay more attention to the texture on the edges of these. I wouldn't want them to be just flat looking. I'd want them to look like I drew them this way. Um, all right, so where else can I trim? There's a bunch of black here that is not going to be, that's interfering with that green. So I'm going to trim all this out like that. Okay. Um, there's a little bit here that I can save. So I'm going to trim all of this out. Okay. Let's try this part right here. I'll speed this up in the video a little bit. All right, so now we can step back and take a look at what I trimmed and what's happening here. And I can see there's a part right there that I, that I missed. There's other parts here, but since they're on the side, I'm, I'm just gonna do this, you know, I have to do it a little bit at a time because it's easy to get lost in here. I've been looking at this pattern for a minute, so, um, but even still, sometimes it's hard to sort stuff out visually, so I try to, just do it in steps so that I don't wind up erasing something that I wanted to keep. All right, so I like the way that this is crossing the line here. So let's take a look and see if this is working. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of all this green art uh, and start over with the tiling. So Commander Control Y to get the um, magic wand tool, click on that, select the green art and get rid of it. All right, copy, paste in front, and I'm gonna nudge it up 10 inches, then copy, paste in front, nudge it down 10 inches, and this uh, border edge is looking good other than that um, overlap right there. So again, shift E to get the eraser tool, and I'll speed this up. Okay, maybe I'll put a little piece in there to make that work better, but for now, let's just say that's good. Copy, paste in front. I'm just gonna retile it out so I can say that. All right, I think I've got that one close. I'm, I'm gonna have to fix that patch in there. All right, so now let's work on the sides. Uh, again, I wanna just change this to a color here and um, copy, paste in front and move it eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because that's the width of the tile. And then copy, paste in front. Uh, I'm gonna go down by 10 for that. And then I'm gonna take all three of these and move them down the half drop, five inches. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now that I have the half drop here, I can see where it's crossing the line. I'm gonna move these over all right, so now I've set up that art um, all the way around and I only wanna trim you know, one side of this tile. And again, I'm looking for ways to keep some of the art crossing the border. And I'm gonna be trimming the black art with my eraser tool. 
So let's see. I really, you know, that art right there crossing the border, that's a really nice curve. So I want to get rid of that other thing that's coming in there in the green and interfering with it. But I have to find it over here. You see, it's the same thing. This part that's coming in here is this part that's coming in here. So I'm going to trim away that black so I can preserve this nice curvy shape here. Shift E to get the eraser tool and then just continue on erasing. Here I am speeding the, us up through the process. So you don't have to watch every little bit of it because it does take time to do this. And then I'm speeding you through the process of tiling this out since we've done that before. And that way I can check and make sure everything's looking the way I want it to. Okay, so now we can see just a little bit of overlap left that needs to be addressed, but I do see that art is crossing the bounding shape. This, I like the way this is crossing here and it's interfering with this green art here. So this, I wanna keep that and I wanna trim this. And that art in black is right down here in the corner. Um, so, and you just always have to look because you know on the edges, everything is gone down by a half. So what I wanna do is, you know, trim the black away so it doesn't interfere with this shape here. So I'm speeding this part of the video up. Okay, zooming out and I'm seeing that's looking better. So again, magic wand tool, quickly erase all of that stuff so I can tile it out again. And while we're speeding through this part, go ahead and subscribe to my email newsletter. I send out Illustrator tips on a regular basis and that link is in the description for this video. All right, so it's looking, I don't see the black and the green overlapping. Only like right there, there's a tiny little bit of maybe it's getting too close. So shift E, just, you know, so it doesn't look quite, you know, that um, perfectly trimmed there has to look like I drew it. Um, and then I think there is a gap. Let's see, this piece right here, uh, I want it to be thinner like that. And then um, I need another piece here. So I'm gonna go into outline, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go into uh, isolation mode, double click, and I'm gonna option drag out a copy of that. And, you know, just try and mess it up a little bit so that it doesn't look like an exact copy of that. And I might spend a little more time on that or I might grab something from somewhere else, but that's pretty good. Okay, so I've done a little more fixing and now I'm ready to take this into pattern editing mode. So I'm gonna select it and then go object and pattern make. Here we are, and we know this is a half drop, and we also know the tile size. That is eight tab by 10 inches. So now we have that tile size, and I see a flaw here. I think it's because the art became ungrouped, as it always does. So I'm gonna go Command or Control A to select all, and then Command or Control G to group it, and that's good. I'm seeing what the art should look like, and when I back out, it looks like it's repeating fairly well. And it's got that nice interlocking look that I wanted. I definitely see a few things that I would tweak, but for the most part, it's looking good. So that's how you can get around the limitations in pattern editing mode, just by moving out to the artboard. And I know it seems like a long and tedious process, but actually when you're not also trying to make a video, it doesn't take that long to do it. And frankly, it's just nice to be working on the artboard where every single one of the tools and brushes and all those things work well and just use pattern editing mode for what it does really well, which is give you sort of that way of setting up your pattern, getting it to look the way you want it, and then just do that deep editing that you need to do out on the artboard. So I hope this has been a helpful video for you. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator online on my YouTube channel and in my courses membership at lauracoylecreative.com. And thank you so much for watching.